G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and Just The Tips, one of my two salaciously named football shows. In today's video, we are going to predict round 16. I had a very El Mediamo round of tipping, quite poor actually in the end. Um, the two tips that I got wrong this weekend were Port Adelaide over Brisbane, tipped the home side there, and I uh, got that one brutally wrong in an absolutely horrendous fashion. Uh, and you know, I, I took a punt on GWS last week for literally no reason. And uh, you know, that game played out like everyone else except me thought it would. Um, so I obviously got that one wrong. Other than that, tipped uh, the D's just over North Melbourne. Again, I did think, I did flirt with the idea of tipping North. Couldn't do it in the end, and thankfully I didn't. SNN too good for West Coast. Fremantle too good for um, the Gold Coast Suns, and obviously at the start of the week, Carlton too good for Geelong. So I got four out of six, but it did, it did seem like most people did relatively well this round because I dropped 50 spots I'm around. 300 out of about, I don't know, 1,200 people in our competition. So we will shout out all the weekly winners on our various tipping competitions. But if you could do me a favor first, guys, if you could have a look just to see if you're subscribed to this channel, it would mean a lot to me if you did consider subscribing. In the last 28 days, we've had 36 and a half thousand different people watch a video on this YouTube channel, and I'm trying my best to grow it as quickly as possible. So if there's anyone out there that's watching the content and enjoying it, but hasn't bothered to hit subscribe yet, first of all, I forgive you. But secondly, if you would consider subscribing, it would mean a lot to me. Thanks. So we're going to shout out all the weekly winners. Uh, we have got our members tipping competition and the winner this week was Yo Do A Shui. Great username. I feel like I recognize that from Bigfooty. Let me know in the comments if you're from Bigfooty as well. Uh, perfect round of six with a margin of 47. Obviously uh, the Blues smashing Geelong in the end. Um, so yeah, hence the big margin. We've got the general tipping winner, Shannon Humphreys. Well done, Shannon, with six correct tips and a margin of 23. The overall leader for the members tipping competition is Real Swift for at least the second week in a row from memory with 90 overall. And the overall tipping competition leader is Chase Costa for at least the second week in a row with 92. And Tully Griffiths has a stranglehold on the number one position in our fantasy competition as well. His average hasn't changed, uh, but to average 2043, you know, after the buy rounds, is great going, so well done, Tully. And uh, I think it's Neville's Nipples, his team is called. No, no questions necessary. All right, let's get into round 16. So the round kicks off with a battle between 9th and 10th, which should be juicy. These two sides have both been strong for a number of years now. You might not have predicted at the start of the season this game would be a battle between 9th and 10th. And uh, they kind of intersect in going in different direction, it feels like. The, the, the Ds have been very lackluster. Something's a little bit off with them at the moment. And, you know, conceding five goals to nothing against North Melbourne in the final quarter really spoke to that malaise, but it didn't just start there. It was obviously, you know, a, a loss away to West Coast, um, which didn't seem a massive deal at the time. But then you go to Alice Springs, lose by 100 points. Uh, things aren't looking too great at Demon Land right now. They're going to need to shake that off pretty soon. The Lions, on the other hand, have won something like four of their last five or something like that. Not sure exactly. It might even be four of their last six with one draw in there as well against the Crows. Either way, they're playing some good footy. Most recently made a huge statement going to Adelaide Oval at a ground where they lost that game, I reckon, by like 10, 11 goals last year. They reversed that and won by 79 points. It's absurd. That's absurd against a very lackluster power. But either way, the Lions, you know, their midfield's cranking at the moment. Their tours are going all right. And we also factor in that these two sides have played each other once already this year and the Lions won. And that was when the Lions were out of form, if I'm not mistaken. That was their first win of the season. You know, in previous years, I'd give Melbourne a red hot chance, but it's just so hard to back them in right now. And, you know, the Lions are probably one of the better teams in the comp on current form. It's a, it's a weird season. We have some teams outside the eight performing much better than the teams inside the eight in some cases. So let's just say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back in the Lions to win comfortably. And I reckon it might be at least six goals. And I feel like it could be more than that. On current form, the Demons need a lift. The Demons need a lift. North Melbourne versus the Bulldogs. North Melbourne, we just touched on there with their massive last quarter against the Ds. Nearly got the job done. A little bit unlucky in pockets. But overall, it's been a really refreshing three weeks from, you know, obviously what we saw in the first 12 games of this season for them. It started with a win over West Coast. Um, again, you know, it wasn't a four-quarter performance, but they were very good for three quarters. They were outstanding for a half against Collingwood, maybe a tick over a half, and unfortunately lost that game. And in the last quarter, switched up to this more run and gun style against the Ds, and, and it almost got them a win, uh, playing one really dominant quarter of footy. So they're going to want to put you know more quarters together. That's naturally the next step for them, but at least we're seeing some real signs from, from North Melbourne. So at this current point in time, it's not a, not a good time to play North, relatively speaking. 
The Bulldogs, on the other hand, they have, I think, most recently just smashed the, the Dockers. I would have thought they had a, they must have had a bye last week and have been inconsistent, one of the many inconsistent teams in this glut of teams in the mid there. Um, but their form line is all right, albeit off a of bye. You know, I made the comment, you know, grading how the Dogs are going this season. We did a, a mid-season uh, report card, if you like, for the Dogs, and I thought, you know, they'd like to be sitting in the eight, but now they have a bit of belief. I think they've had some really good wins this year. And I would be surprised if they dropped this game. As good as North have been, it wouldn't be the biggest shock to see the Dogs drop this because of the nature of this season and because North are going all right. But I feel like this is also, as much as it's a bad time to get North, it's also a bad time to get the Bulldogs. I think. I think. Obviously, I'm not 100% certain. Having said that, I will say that the Dogs will be too good for the Ruse. And I'll call it five goals. But it could be one of those games that's close and then the dogs kick a few late. Um, so I'll, I'll tip the dogs. I'm not too not too brave at the moment to tip North. Sydney versus Fremantle. We have uh, Sydney, the least up and down side in the competition against Fremantle, who are one of many up and down sides of the competition. So starting with Sydney, good win over the Giants last week. Um, you know, I think they're getting their flowers in terms of credit for what they're doing and the, the depth of contributors they have and different ways to hurt their opposition and get on top is outstanding. It's outstanding. That does not mean they're infallible. Is it infallible? Infallible. Because you also factor in, I think the last time they played at this ground, Fremantle actually got the dub. But they played earlier this year. Cam McCarthy news broke, like I think the day of that game. Fremantle battled hard and just were inaccurate in front of goal. It was a bit of an off days. I don't know how much to read into that. But Fremantle, you know, for all their inconsistency, they are a team that can play well anywhere. They can beat the best team on their home deck, and then they can, you know, inexplicably lose at home the next week. So, that, I mean, their last game was a solid win over a decent Gold Coast side. Um, you know, I don't even think that's particularly relevant to this game. I don't know which version of Fremantle is going to show up. I feel like this game might be pretty good. And I think it's like 98% people are tipping Sydney. I think that is not reflective of Fremantle's chances here. I think they're a better chance than that. Um, that being said, that being said, I am a little bit gun-shy having tipped against Sydney last week. I'm feeling like a little bitch, and I don't want to, <laughs> to do the brave tip here. I think I think Fremantle are a chance here because they have beaten Sydney at this ground previously, albeit Sydney have come a long way since then. And it's not about how good or bad Sydney are. It's just that there's a loss coming. I'm not going to be brave enough to tip it. I'm a, I'm a wuss. But I will say 20 points. I mean, Sydney could get a hold of him. But equally, I think Fremantle could really make a fist of this. I'm going to sip Sydney by 20. Gold Coast versus the Pies. This one is tricky. This one is tricky. So Collingwood's last game was against North Melbourne. Um, didn't start well. North did. And they came back and won. Um, in typical Collingwood fashion, showing a lot of character. Yeah, we're definitely one of the best teams in the comp. Definitely one of the best teams in the comp. Um, you know, they've been on a pretty good run. I think they've had one loss since about round three. That was against the Bulldogs, if I'm not mistaken. Gold Coast continuing a very predictable season in that I think they're undefeated at home and winless away, which is kind of bizarre. I actually don't know what the stat is for when the last time a team has had that profile this late into a season. I'd, I'd be interested to find out. But anyway, um, you know, even though Collingwood are one of the best teams in the competition, this is not going to be a simple task. Gold Coast at home, like I don't know if it's going to be Dewey or anything like that, but you know they are they have a clear home ground advantage. They play their ground really well, and this could be this could be absolutely gettable for them. I feel like Collingwood have some soldiers back now. <sighs> They've been on a run. This is a massive danger game for Collingwood. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know if I can tip against them though. I think I'm feeling like this will be a really good game, and Collingwood might snatch it late. There is no Ben King either, is there? That is going to be a factor. Oh, I don't know. This one I'm just more tipping on gut rather than, you know, real logic. And my gut is telling me, and my gut is constantly wrong. I think Colling will win this narrowly for some reason. I will say four points in a thriller. Geelong versus Essendon. Geelong versus Essendon. This could be, could be a good game. But at the moment, the Cats' form line is horrendous. And most recently, a big loss to Carlton at the MCG. And Carlton probably second best, maybe third best, depending on your opinion team in the competition right now i'd probably say second best is fair so that is a stern test and they fell well short and they have this massive trend of conceding huge scores at the moment since round seven um, and you know, i think they've had one win since then and generally looked lackluster and i think dangerfield's going to miss this game which is also a factor and they're coming up against an essendon side who 
probably, I was going to say probably won't put up a huge score. They did score 122 against West Coast, generally a high scoring game. But Essendon, I think, kind of impressed me against West Coast because I think they got a good version of West Coast where, you know, obviously the Eagles were poor for three weeks before that. West Coast, I thought, came in and played their brand pretty well. And every time Essendon got threatened, they had a response. They were very clean, very clinical. It was a very mature performance that made me think that Essendon has matured as a side. And I'm starting to feel increasingly confident about them. And I don't think I'm going to tip against them in this week. You know, I feel like there's been so many games where Geelong has belted Essendon, but I think this might be a turning of the tide now. And I, I, I don't think I'm brave enough to tip the Cats. This could be the game that, you know, Geelong just snapped back into gear. But there's no doubt that Essendon have been a better side um, well, in, in this year in totality. And the percentage is actually very similar, interestingly. So, I mean, Geelong have been poor. I don't know if I'm confident enough to tip an Essendon big win, but I reckon they might just, you know ease their way to a 20-point win. Um, hopefully, it's a good game. I'm actually looking for... This is very intriguing and will have an impact on the eight. Like, if Geelong drop this, they're losing touch with the top eight. Um, and Essendon, if they win this, you know, it further consolidates a really good chance to make the top four. So, I'll say Essendon by 20 points. We've got the Crows and the Giants. Two teams that I expected to be good this year. You know, to different extents, they've kind of fallen short of that. Adelaide are sitting in the bottom four and... Have had some good performances this year. You know, their showdown, they beat the Blues, they drew with the Lions. Like That was all in a cluster of games where they looked pretty good. They beat West Coast by 100 points. West Coast were terrible in that game, but to still win by 100 points shows that the Crows you know, have something. And you know, since then, it's probably been a bit of a drop-off. Their percentage is still 102, which is bizarre. GWS, I've probably over-invested in as a team that I thought was going to go deep this year. And you know, I, their last loss was against Sydney. Fair, fair enough. Um, and in the week before that, Probably could have won by more against the power. Both teams were inaccurate, so I'm not too sure about that. Uh, but either way, I think what have the Giants won? Two of their last five, two of the last eight, something like that. It has been a big drop off from the first month of the season when they looked like they might even be the number one team. Before Sydney emerged, I thought the Giants were up there. Um, that, so it could come back. It could come back. I mean, these two sides met last year, and the Crows, I remember, I feel like were favourites in that game. The Giants were, you know, going on this second half of the season run and were beating everyone everywhere. So maybe the Giants were a better team back then, but so were the Crows. I don't think this is simple. I think the Crows are a decent shout at home like against any opponent. We saw them get up by five goals against the Swans and ultimately lose. So I'm iffy about this. I'm not confident about either team, to be honest. I think, I think I'm going to tip the Giants to be conservative, but I think we could get any version of Adelaide in this game. And uh, we'll see. I'll tip the Giants by 15. The Saints and Port Adelaide, two teams probably right now not feeling great about their team's fortunes. Um, you know, St. Kilda's last game, if I'm not mistaken, was a 20-point loss against the Lions at the Gabba. You know, fairly decent effort, to be honest. And they did have two wins before that. Either way, you know, probably still flat in general. They host Port Adelaide at Marble. Port Adelaide have been in horrendous form. You know, an 80-point loss at home to a good side in the Brisbane Lions, um, you know, shows really where they're at at the moment. And I thought the Giants game, the game before that, was also decidedly poor. And I think they're on a bit of a losing stretch predating their bye as well. So it's very hard to back them in, but equally with St Kilda. They, they've run a couple of recent games. They beat the Suns at Marvel. They beat the Eagles in Perth. Nothing really to get too excited about. <sighs> I'm thinking that Port Adelaide will make a, a response this week. That is probably my gut feeling. I feel like these two sides met at Marvel last year and Port Adelaide won that narrowly. And that kind of consolidated them as a uh, decent team last year. And, oh, geez, this one is tough. Like, I could see it going either way. But I think I'm probably least surprised by the potential outcome of Port Adelaide pulling their finger out and maybe not winning by much, but winning. It's just so hard to back St. Kilda. I'm sorry, Saints fans. I'm going to say the power win by 16 points. Now, we got Richmond and Carlton. Um, I don't know how much to analyze here. I would be absolutely stunned if Richmond gave them a good shake because Carlton have emerged as one of the best teams in the comp, no doubt. So that they just beat Geelong by 10 goals and, um, you know, Geelong are probably in a bit of a form slump, but generally speaking, the Blues sit 10 and 4 and, um, you know, unearthed this Tom DeConning-shaped weapon that they didn't previously have, you know, prior to this season. Again, another team with different ways to hurt you. Strong stoppage game, strong turnover game. Um, and it would just take a monumental drop-off from Carlton to lose this game, I think. Even though the Tigers have been a little bit improved and they had a recent win over the Crows in Adelaide and, and around that, their form has actually been solid. So is it enough to give them a sneaky chance in this game? I don't think so, to be honest. I mean, they might. They might play well. They might play well, but I think it's an entirely different thing 
to say that Carlton will lose. That being said, they did play early this season and Richmond played really well, didn't they? We're a bit removed from that now. I don't know. I feel like Carlton will come a long way. I'm probably overthinking it, but let's say Carlton by 25. You know, I'm not necessarily sold on the fact that Carlton will smash them. I think Richmond have some spirit. Depends which Richmond arrive, obviously, as a young side that's a little bit overexposed at the moment with their injuries. Um, yeah, we'll go Carlton by 25. West Coast v Hawthorne at Optus Stadium. And... Um, I'm trying to think when the last time we played Hawthorne at Optus Stadium was. I reckon 2021, maybe? 2022? I actually don't even remember, to be honest with you. Um, either way. Either way. I thought uh, we'll start with West Coast. Really bad three weeks before the bye. Come out a little bit refreshed after the bye. Um, played pretty well against Essendon to be missing Reed and Kelly and win the clearance battle. Was impressive and showed real growth on the previous three weeks. Essendon were just a little bit too good and burned them on turnover. So, um, you know, I'm comfortable with how West Coast is going to show up to this game, but there's some clear deficiencies in the way that they play, albeit hopefully Kelly and Reid return. Hawthorne have just been so good. They've been really, really impressive over a number of weeks now. I don't know, probably six or seven games now. I think the Hawks have been, well, they might have only dropped one, and that was a game that they probably shouldn't have lost. So as far as form sides go, Hawthorne are right up there. And there's not a whole heap of recent format up the stadium against West Coast to really consider. That being said, you know, it's proportionately similar to the MCG. So I don't think they'll be too um, concerned about, you know, ground dimensions or whatever. You know, I, you know, I haven't sit West Coast once this year. Um, there was a week that I almost did and I, or I did and then I changed it right before the game. That might have even happened twice. Um, and I really want to tip West Coast. And I do have this feeling, you know, I have this feeling that we might win. And my gut has, on West Coast has been fairly solid this year. I tipped us to lose to North. I don't know. I feel like we're going to play well. Let's put it that way. And then sometimes when you're a shitty side, you can play well and not win. Like against Essendon. So I don't know. I, you'd be a brave man to tip against Hawthorne. There's the bye work against them. I'm hoping. But I think you'd be a brave man to tip tip West Coast here. I think they're a chance. I really do. Um, you know, if Reed and Kelly come in, add a little bit of a different dynamic to that midfield, maybe. But Hawthorne, oh yeah, I just, I just remembered the Tasmania game last year. Screw it. Hawthorne by 24. All right, that is the end of this week's uh, tipping. Wow, look at that. Just a, a quick aside. Start of round 17, third versus fourth, Essendon versus Collingwood. When was the last time we had a... a I mean, okay, the Zanzac Day games, which are always huge, but like in terms of context of the season when was the last time a Collingwood Essendon clash had this much weight to it I want to say 2004 you know that was the last time Essendon won a final did they make the finals in 06 ish I can't remember but either way that's juicy so Sydney Carlton Essendon Collingwood how's that for a top four GWS and Port Adelaide if I get my tips right this week we'll go fifth and sixth on the ladder and they have been you know a little bit underwhelming for sure Brisbane up in seventh that's a huge result for them Fremantle, assuming they lose, will drop to 8th. But, you know, if they beat the Swans, they will actually be still 5th. That's not that juicy. Uh, Bulldogs down in 9th despite the win, but I think that's moving up the ladder. Geelong losing touch. Melbourne losing touch, if I get my tips correct. Hawthorne still planted in 12th, but then they would, in theory, become even with the teams above. <laughs> It'd be even with Geelong. Wow. Other than that, I think most of the ladder will stay the same if I get my tips right. But let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think? of this week's games. Let me know your tips, your upset of the round. What's my upset of the round? I might actually shout my boys out for upset of the round. Or no, upset of the round is probably Fremantle over Sydney. Um, but I do think, I do think, I have a feeling about West Coast. I don't know, it's gonna, it's gonna bite me in the ass, I reckon. Upset of the round contender for me is Fremantle over Sydney. Um, and I'd say game of the round, Gold Coast versus Collingwood. Even though it doesn't seem like a juicy matchup, I feel like it will be a good game for whatever reason. So let me know in the comments what you think, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.